Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, first let me begin by saying uh, to members of the Wigwe and Umuba families, especially the children, Tochi, David, and Okachi, let me say that I'm very mindful that no amount of words or even action can assuage the intensity of your sorrow, nor can words or even actions today heal your wounded hearts. We can only hope that it helps for you to know that you are not alone in your grief and that this tragedy has broken the hearts of so many. I'm sure you've seen that this is not just a national tragedy, but across Africa and many parts of the world, many are grieving the loss of a true friend, a hope bringer, and a man for whom the future always seemed so imminent. That all across this land and elsewhere, many have been weeping with you. This tragedy has troubled so many, young and old, Hubbard's friends, associates, Doran's circle of friends and associates of so many years, Cheese's friends, a deep dark cloud hangs over our hearts. We've heard so much about Herbert's life and times, exemplary life and times. I've known him for so many years. I'm not even so sure how many years. While I was in office for the entire eight years that I was in office, Herbert called me practically every other month just to say, how are you doing? Never asked a favor. But two months before I left office, he called me and said he needed to see me. And I thought, well, he must have some, some mission. And he came with a notebook. I was very surprised because Herbert ever, never ever came with a notebook. And he said he wanted to know what my plans were for the future after I left office. And after I laughed over it, he insisted. And he took notes very diligently of everything that I said I wanted to do. And thereafter, he visited me at least no less than three or four times before I left office. The first day before he died, that was a week before he died, he called me up. He had called me on Tuesday and said he was coming to see me in Abuja on Thursday. And he did. We spent about three hours reviewing practically everything, so many different things. The university, the philanthropies he was involved in, and various other things. I don't think any event in recent times has so, for me in particular, so jarring, made it clear how important friendship and how important our relationships are. Who, Herbert was someone who walked the talk of brotherhood and friendship. It wasn't just rhetoric. It wasn't just talk. He walked that talk. He was there for his friends, there for his associates, and we've heard how deeply, deeply he cared for his family. This event has confronted me, and I'm sure many of us, with our own mortality all the plans we make, and the future that we envisage. But three things that I'd like you to know, especially true. The first is that as far as God is concerned, and I'm so happy that Mrs. Awoshika mentioned this, the manner of death is not important to God. John was beheaded, as we've heard. Stephen was stoned to death. Elisha died of an undisclosed illness. What is important to God is the difference between dying and perishing. The difference between dying and perishing. Everyone will die. 
every one of us will die and will confront our maker. But the word of God says in John 3.16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, will not perish, but have everlasting life. Not will not die, but will not perish. Perishing is dying without Christ. And the manner of death does not matter as far as whether we die or perish. There's a scripture that came to my mind as I was asked to share, to, to, as I was asked to uh, speak this morning. And that scripture is found in Luke 13. Jesus Christ was confronted by people who had heard that a tower collapsed in Siloam and it killed 18 people. 18 people were killed. A tower collapsed, fell on the heads of people. And the same people who told him the story also said that just a few days ago, Herod caught some Jews, sliced them into some Galileans, sliced them into little pieces, and mixed their blood with the sacrifice. And Jesus expressed his opinion about the matter. He said, all of these people who died, the ones upon whom the tower collapsed, or even the ones who were sliced into pieces and their blood was mixed in the sacrifice, that none of them was worse than any other person, was a worse sinner than any other person. He said, oh, you know, none of them. That, you, that the reason why they died in those gruesome circumstances was that they did something wrong. He said, no. He said, but what was important is, and we're saying now to the living, that you must repent. That you must repent. That if you don't repent, you may perish. And I pray that all of us who are here, I pray that all of us who are here, will consider that as far as God is concerned, the moment and time of our death, or the manner, is entirely left to him. What is crucial is I is our lives eternally. And what matters to him is our lives eternally. Finally, I'll pray. The word of God says that weeping may endure for a night, but that joy comes in the morning. I pray for you that this night will be very short and that the joy will come very quickly. God bless you.